the first thing that I'm going to show you is from the perspective of someone who may be on the desktop or maybe they're on their laptop, but kind of like what I'd call the office perspective. And the concept here is this is someone who has administrative privileges, who's logging into site capture in order to get the work sent out to the field so it can get done. And I know we've got people from all different industries who are watching us, but this particular example, just to set the stage for you, this is going to be something where this is a solar installation company. Primarily what they're going to be doing is they're going to need to go out and do a site audit after the job has been initially estimated and the customer has signed off that they do want to buy their solar roofing. This company is going to need to go out and do a full audit to make sure that they're prepared for that installation. And then subsequently, they'll actually go out and do something like a completion report. So they'll go in and, and make sure the project work was done. And what you're seeing here is the entry point. So I would be the person that's going to go in and look at all of my job sites. <clears throat> and in this case, I'll just select one of those sites. Um, one quick note, one of the best ways to prevent repeat site visits is to have all the accurate information getting out to the field the first time. So when the person gets there, they know where they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to do, and what they're required to gather in terms of data and photos. And so in this particular um, way that I'm showing this to you, what you'll see is my job sites are already organized. All of my critical data points about those job sites is in here. So whether this be a residential home or a commercial building, for whatever purpose that you're sending someone out there to do work on your behalf, all of these critical details are already here. And all I need to do is pick the type of work that I want to have done, check a box. In this case, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have someone go out and do a site audit. Then I can quickly tell them, for example, when I want that audit done. And then I can also quickly assign that out to the right person. And so that I can show you this from both sides, I'm gonna assign this out to myself as if I were the person going out to do the audit out in the field. Right now, of course, I'm logged in as an administrator. When I switch over to my phone, I'll show you that. And I've quickly actually created this. So I'm just gonna put a note in here so we can see it when I get to my phone and know this is the specific one I did. But I could edit anything that I needed to, quickly put a note in here. And now what's gonna happen is this form which is gonna have all of its requirements and all of the fields in it that I need to have taken on the job site is going to be a notification is gonna go out to the user who I'm sending out to the job site to do the work. And I can just sit back and wait for them to get the work done. So what I'm gonna do is pause my sharing and I'm gonna switch over and show you guys how this looks from the mobile side. So now what you're seeing is my actual phone, it's my live phone. And I'm logged in here as what we call a field user. So our site capture product is role and permission based. And one of the ways this also helps with um, eliminating the need for redundant site visits is you can actually focus the information you need to get into the right hands based on the user's role. So in this case, I'm logged in as a field user. I could, I could be a crew member. I could be a site supervisor. I'm going to be going out in the field and doing work. And as you can see, I log in to Site Capture. I just press in to my app. I've got an entire list of all the different work that I have. I have different things that are going to draw my attention to make it easy for me to see what I need to do. I can also actually map my work out. I can actually look at a view of my work in a mapped view. And that'll just help me decide like where I'm going quickly. Um, just pressing little thumb points to show me kind of summary of that work and then I could just drill directly into it or I can look at it in a list view and I can organize it and just find things either by like what's due today or what's closest to me. Um, whatever it may be, I have lots of different ways I can organize and find the work that I need to find. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new site survey that I need to work on. So you can see this is the one that I was just assigned. By the way, I would have received a notification that this was assigned to me. So I could have clicked directly through, for example, an email message that has a link in it. So I could have found this instantly. But here I am, I'm in this site survey. And the most important thing that, that everyone needs to know is you have flexibility in how our forms are structured and required fields are critical. So you're in order to get someone out to that job site and get the data points that you need and get the photos you need, being able to structure it so that you've got required photos is going to be huge. So one of the biggest things about this, you can see these numbers that are stacking up here. These are areas where there are required fields. And this is telling me that there are things I need to do when I get to the job site. 
So it, they're easy to find because they're in this bright orange or reddish orange color. I can scroll with my thumb so I can have my phone in one hand and I see, oh, right off the bat, I need to put in an assessment date. So I would pick that date. And then the next one is telling me that I need to take a photo on arrival showing I'm wearing safety gear. One of the other things that's gonna be critical, so it's not just showing them what photos they're required to take, but in some cases you might need to be giving them an example so they can make sure they take the photo you absolutely need. So in this case, I could click on this example photo and it's showing me you need to take a selfie, you need to take a front facing photo and you need to show us that you're wearing your construction gear. But I will take, I will take the picture. So what you'll see is I've opened my camera and I'm just gonna put it in that mode so then I could take my picture. And what that's going to do is that's showing that I've actually met that requirement since I took that photo. So now if I go back, you can see that there's no required field there for me. And then I would move on. So I go to my next one. I've got another place where I'm required to take a photo. And again, like I mentioned, it's showing an example to make sure that the person knows that they're getting the right photo. I'm going to talk for a minute about our photo taking experience because getting the right photos and getting them in the quality that you need is one of the most critical aspects to not having to send someone back redundantly so that they have to go back and take something they missed um, or something that you couldn't see. So I will press the camera icon and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to finger focus or zoom in. So like right now, I'll zoom in on this home here. I can finger focus by pressing on it. Pressing the white button allows me to take that photo. Um, I can also take like photos in kind of a rapid fire way if I needed to get several photos taken quickly. The other thing is I can also pinch to get a wide angle. So just a photo of a much wider angle. Either way, I've got lots of um, options in terms of the quality of that photo I'm taking. And then another thing that's behind the scenes is our customers in that admin role can actually determine if they want those photos to be taken at like the highest possible resolution. We see that a lot when people are taking photos of things that have labels. So for example, taking a photo at a very high resolution so that they can read the data that's on a label is another way, you know, getting that critical information back. So you can see here, I've gone through and I've met those requirements. One of the things Kamal mentioned is the ability to communicate quickly back to someone else from the field. So what I could do here on this particular job is I could open up this chat string and I could say um, something that would be applicable to my job. So I'm gonna say, can't get on the roof, help. And this is gonna act like any other app that you guys are probably familiar with that does chat inside of it. Um, this is notifying. The people who have permission on this project, this will be notifying the manager who's responsible for this particular job site. And they'll be able to be seeing that message in real time. They're getting a notification on their end and they can reply to me here. So just allowing me to take care of things while I'm standing right there on site. We also offer the ability for you to focus people in to get the information that you need without making these forms too busy or making them too long or too difficult to get through. So in this case, I say, no, I couldn't get to the roof. I had no attic access. So there you go, that's done. Let's just say, for example, I did have attic access. I say yes. And now all of a sudden, even more requirements are showing up for me. So um, I'm just gonna fill these required fields out as I go. and. I'll just take another photo since that's one of the requirements. And then just go through and quickly answer questions. All of our fields are meant to be very simple and easy to fill out by the people when they're in the field. And one of the other things that you need, not only do you need the required fields, but <clears throat> you also need it to be easy for them to use and fill out or else you're gonna have trouble getting people to adopt it. So nice big buttons where they can make selections. Um, like I said, conditional, what we call conditional fields or things that dynamically show up based on the answers to questions, just putting them in a situation where they don't have to get confused, easy, straightforward, they can follow it all the way down. And again, I'll just go through and I'll finish out these requirements here. We've got drop down selections. We also have things where they can make multiple selections. One other quick note I'll just show you, if there's something that you want inventoried or assessed or inspected out at any job site, and you don't know what the quantity of that item is in advance. So maybe you know there's going to be roof arrays or you know there's going to be additional 
issues or items that need to be cataloged, but you don't know them all in advance, what you can do is you can embed our forms. That's what I like to call mini forms. So basically, it just gives you the ability to say, I need you to add these for me as you go. So I'm going to add my first one. Again, these can have required fields so that I can go through and make sure I get the information that's needed. In this case, again, I'm going to require photos. Obviously, required photos are going to be um, kind of a big aspect of our product and what people focus on often. Um, I could even require a comment if I wanted to. Just so you're aware, any place that you do something like take a photo to caption it, have a comment, or have a text field, those can always be populated by voice. Again, just making it as easy as possible to use. And, you know, again, just go through, answer my questions, and be done. Another quick note I should have mentioned on the photo taking experience, again, just to make it as helpful as possible, if the person out in the field really wants to make sure they're drawing attention to something, they can literally draw on the photo. So we often see things like arrows or we'll see things circled on photos. They can also crop the photo. They can lighten it. They can do some editing to the photo right there in the field just to make it as clear as possible. So when it gets back to you, it'll be what you need, give you the information you need and won't require you to send someone back out. We have no limits on the number of photos that can be taken in each of these forms that get sent out to the field. Um, there's no limit to how many photos can even be taken in a specific field. So the person's just gonna go through, do their work. As you've seen, you know, let me show you before, look at their examples, take their photos, and then when they're done and they've met all of those requirements, they could mark it complete. But if they haven't met the requirement, they're gonna get this pop-up and that's just going to remind them there's something they haven't quite done. So again, I'll go drill in. It says to me, oh, okay, I need to take a photo of this. I'll take another photo here to meet that requirement. Scroll down. I see another place that I have to take a photo. So that's a quick overview of what it looks like in mobile. Another quick thing to see here is you can see there's very clear indications of whether this is syncing or not or how much is left to sync. That's letting that person out in the field know when it says sync in progress, then those photos and those data points are still being sent back up to the cloud. So the person back in the office can't see them quite yet. But as soon as it's done and it's synced, now they can see it. So in this case, you know, again, I could be going back to my chat and I could say, like, you know, take a look at the photos. Are they right? And again, I'm out on the field, so I'm not going to have to go back out a second time. Someone can be looking at them right here and now while I'm still out there. So now I've done all my requirements. I'm going to mark this complete. It's going to fully sync, so it grays out, so I can't change it while that's happening. So going back to, you know, again, I think communication is a huge part of what prevents you from needing to go back out to a job site a second time for a job that should have only taken one trip. Um, we talked about notifications. I'm just going to show you this is what it does look like. So now I'm back in that web app view as an admin. So even if I'm, you know, here on my dashboard view, I can see I've got messages. And if I click this, it's going to show me that I've got this stream of messages here. So for example, I go in here and I can see those messages right at that time. The other thing I could do, like let's say that person had sent me a message saying, can you please review a specific photo or can you please look at what I've done while I'm still on site? And by the way, you're going to notice that a lot of these photos were taken at a trade event. So you'll see some funny photos here. But the idea is I could be in here, you know, reviewing these, evaluating them um, as I go. And one of the things we talked about was being able to look at different resolutions. So we do give you the ability to choose inside what we refer to as templates. But templates are really just that structure that creates the form kind of smart templates on our side, creating smart forms, but you have the ability to choose like the highest resolution. So that's going to give you the ability to drill in like here. So you can see me you know, drilling into that photo so I could look at things in great detail, or I can also be just scrolling kind of photo to photo. Again, I kind of picked a bad one because trade shows, so I'll get out of it. But this would be one way that you can be looking at these things while the person is there. If you need them to retake something, you can instantly send them a message saying, you know, hey, you need to retake this photo. 
You could also be editing those photos from within here. So maybe you want to, if you wanted to delete a photo and say, hey, please retake this one or that one. You could be adding your own comments inside the individual fields, you know, just adding them text-wise. But either way, you can be messaging, you can be adding comments, you can be flagging the photos, um, you can be reviewing the data points, and you can be doing all of that while that person is still out there working on the job. So that's just one really critical aspect of this. It's easy to see, kind of track what's happening from an activity standpoint. You can see like, oh, look, this job I had just sent out, it's just gotten marked complete. Again, I can drill into it. Same thing I showed before. I can scroll through, see the answers to questions. I can drill in and click into each and every photo. I can validate that these photos were actually taken on the job site by drilling through to the geolocations here. Um, in addition, I can look at the date and the timestamp and who took that photo. So just telling me that these are those photos that I need for my validation points, either getting information I need to get by looking at the photo, or if I had someone out on that job site taking these photos as proof of something that was necessary for compliance or to report damage, or to do anything for an insurance repair, a claim, you name it, you know, I can prove that these things were taken where I said they were taken, when I said they were taken. So really robust tools in terms of how the photos are handled. They're further going to be cataloged for you. So a lot of people who come to us are dealing with situations where sure, they're getting photos, but someone's going out and taking, you know, 50, 100, 500 photos and just uploading them into a Dropbox or a Google Drive file. In this case, you can actually see it's cataloged. It's going to show you each and every photo, where it was taken, what data point may have been gathered as associated with that photo. We talked about those little mini forms. I can see that whole mini form. What is this photo of? What am I looking at? I'm looking at a roof array. I'm not actually looking at a roof array, but you guys get my point. And again, just all the data I need, the detail of those photos, the ability to zoom in and see them more clearly. And as I mentioned, do things like some light editing, delete them if they're not applicable, flag them because you can flag photos to choose what's going to download into a zip file, or what I might want to appear on a PDF report. And speaking of PDF reports, we give you some pre laid out PDF report designs to make it very easy for you then to take a nicely formatted report uh, choose a version of it that you maybe want to give to your customer, give to a financing company, you know, whatever it is, the purpose that you've gone out and gathered all of this information, whoever needs to get it, you can choose different user roles and do a quick one click to get that report. You can also simply grab the URL for that report, in which case you can send that to someone and they don't need to actually have a login or be a user of our system to come in and get this version of the report. But as you can see, now I've got my report, the data is laid out. We give you some pre-designed layouts, but again, there's configurability and you get many choices about what data points you want to show up on the report. You get choices about where you want those photos to actually show up and whether they're larger and they're one to page or two to page or four to page, like in this report, you can see here, the data is at the top, the photos are laid out at the bottom what shows up as far as like the caption on the photo. In this case, we're showing the geolocation, but you have all kinds of choices about what you want to have show up as it relates to the photos and how that data lays out in that PDF report. If you do want to have a report that looks or behaves a little differently than the ones that are pre-installed in your instance of site capture, again, reach out to your account executive or reach out to your customer success manager or to support at sitecapture.com. Any of us will be able to help you with that. We do have a configuration tool available in our professional package, which is what I've been showing you today. And this particular tool does allow you to go in and make choices about the report itself. So you can kind of just, again, I won't go into this in fine grain detail, but you can kind of see over here on the left, you have choices about different things like titles, what displays, whether or not you want a table of contents, which fields are gonna show up in the body, and then photo layout. You have choices if you're gathering individual items and you want your reports to show up what we refer to as in line. So for every roof array, if I wanted that photo to show up right underneath that roof array, again, I've got layout options here to do that. So we do have some help documents about this, but again, we've got some people here who are 
really good um, hands-on people who can help you with this. And then sometimes we end up in circumstances where customers have really uh, fairly complicated layouts that they want to achieve in their reports. And when that situation exists, um, we can take a look at it. And we have been able sometimes to build, you know, custom reports that give you like, like far more control of the design and the layout than even what you can get with our configuration tools. But the critical component to eliminating the need for redundant site visits is making sure that what you're requiring and what you're asking for out in the field is clear, that the field user can quickly grab the information that you need to see, and that they know what they're required to do and that they understand, you know, like the photos they need to take. Do they need to, to take a short video and attach it and upload that for you? So. All of those things are super important. And the powerhouse behind that is what we refer to as our templates. And again, templates are simply, you can think of them as like the backbone of those smart mobile forms that go out. So in this case, let's just say I've got um, a commercial panel inspection and I have a template for that. There's so much about this that is flexible and configurable and unique to me as the customer of site capture in this instance. So everything from me choosing, you know, what information I want to be out in a display, what I want the template itself, the form to be called, but also very critically, what statuses do I want to have? And then even more so than just what status is, but what kinds of sort of automatic workflows trigger when a person selects those statuses and then who's got permission to actually set those statuses. So you can get incredibly fine-grained and layered with how you work with these statuses. They're very important. There are other workflows that are automated behind these. So for each individual different template, you can have choices like, could they grab this template and create work while they're out in the field from it? Yes or no. You know, do you want notifications to go out when the person marks this work complete? Do you want email notifications to go out? So lots of workflows and triggers and things that can actually be embedded and set to work inside your templates. And then on top of that, they're just incredibly easy to edit and manage. So if I simply want to change the name of something, if I want to take one of these, make a copy of it and kind of create my own template, it's as easy as using something like Word. So I could just say, no, I don't want to call that template. I want to call it form name. Done. If I want to have a default value, so something that shows up, so every time I create work, I can see what type it was. You know, there I go, I put my default value in. You can choose what kind of data inputs you want in each individual template field. So again, really simple, just a matter of checking a box. Here's what I was talking about before. I can choose like what kind of resolutions I want for those photos. I can choose whether or not they're allowed to have a photo that exists on their phone's album and put that photo into this field. And then really critically, is it required or not? Another thing we talked about, you know, just different types of users. I can choose whether the data is not editable. You know, one of the biggest issues is if someone compromises your data, if you've got a unique job identification or an address and you don't want someone out in the field to change that, um, easy, just admin only. And now they can't edit that field, they can read it but they can't change it. So just very simple sets of buttons. You can check boxes, you can check buttons, you can click drag and drop. If I want to have someone do this down here, drag and drop, you can add sections, add the plus button, name your section, and then start creating fields within it. 